uh, I think, a frustration after 17 years of this SNP government, 14 years, of course, of the Tory government at Westminster and a desire for that change. What we're going to see now is a debate internally in the SNP for the next five weeks where they're going to talk to themselves. And we've just had uh, that play out, uh, talking there about independence strategy <laughs> rather than talking about what Scotland really needs. And of course, it was uh, Nicola Sturgeon who said that there shouldn't be a revolving door at the top of government when she referred to the Tories' chaos and the number of prime ministers they've had. We're now going to have three first ministers within uh, almost a year. And I think, how can that be the same? Uh, how can that not be the same? And it's clear that people need to have their say and we need to have change. Thank you. A man in the blue shirt right at the very back. Whoever becomes the leader of the SNP and our new first minister, he knows or they know that they're going to be out of a job in a few months' time when there's a general election when they get absolutely hammered by Labour. Um, Neil has stated there that uh, the uh, Parliament has confidence in the government, but I would suggest to you that the public has absolutely no confidence in the government. Absolutely no confidence. And there's been no confidence. No confidence. A uh, man with the glasses in the middle here. As we're moving into the new election for the SNP party leader, can I ask Neil, does he still echo the SNP comments for a while back that when the Conservatives elected two Prime Ministers without going to a general election, that yeah. it was an affront to democracy? Yeah, Nicholas Sturgeon said that. Yeah. So, so it's yeah. a... Why, why is it different? So it's, uh, there, are, there are a couple of things that I would say on that. There's two, a different process for electing a Prime Minister in uh, Westminster as there is for a First Minister. The Parliament in, in Scotland, in Holyrood, but you uh, elect will choose a candidate. First Minister. That doesn't happen uh, at Westminster, where uh, the, the leader of the largest party tends to uh, lead uh, that government. Uh, I, the other point that I would make in terms of uh, whether or not there should be an election now uh, is... Uh, that, of course, that would not stop, and I know colleagues uh, will know this, that does not stop there having to be an election in 2026. So we'd see yeah. an election now, an election in 2026, and I don't think actually that is what people are looking for. They are looking for what the gentleman at the front row asked for, which is stability. And I think, as I say, I think John Swinney uh, would bring that. I believe Kate Forbes has the potential <laughs> to bring that. Uh, I, I think we have the opportunity Neil. to take that forward. And I think it's a bit trite for colleagues uh, across the panel uh, to be suggesting that this is uh, an issue that we would have uh, a, a First Minister that hasn't been elected by the public. Because, of course, we've got Gordon Brown, uh, who uh, didn't uh, see but a but We have a situation uh, with the Henry McLeish. Right, uh, we so have we'll, a number we'll, of we'll, different we'll, we'll, we'll get into this in the evening. Well, good evening. Should the next Scottish First Minister call an immediate election and let the Scottish electorate decide who leads and govern them? Paul O'Kane. Well, look, I, I think I've already outlined that. Yes, I do think there has to be a democratic process. That's what today's uh, vote of no conference was uh, about. It was a judgment upon this government, which I think has uh, presided over 17 years where services have got worse. We see one in six Scots on a waiting list in the NHS, which Neil is responsible for. We see public services slashed to the bone, particularly in local councils and the police uh, and other services. And I think there is a real appetite out there for change in our country and people want to see a fresh start. I think the way to do that is through an election. We're obviously going to have a general election as well at a UK level. Uh, whenever the Conservatives uh, pluck up the courage to call that. And I think that is a change moment as well. And I think what we're hearing clearly is people want to see a change moment in that. And I think Labour is offering that change. Gary, what do you think? Well, in simple terms, yes. And as soon as possible. Um, you probably gather from the way I talk, I'm not from Scotland. <laughs> but I've, I've lived here for six years. And I can count three policies that the Scottish government have just plain got wrong. The, the name person policy, the, the DRS scheme. Yep, By the way, I did an FOI on that to find out what went wrong. I couldn't get all the answers Lorna. from a freedom of information. Well, Lorna's here. We well, can Lorna's ask her tonight. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll yeah, come to that. What, what, what went to my wrong, question. Lorna? Come on. Yeah. And then we have this hate crime speech bill, which has just made Scotland the laughing stock of the world. And it's because of the government that we have. And below that is the responsibility of the electorate. Us. There is a saying in life, you get what you vote for and you get what you don't vote for. And I can't help but feeling because of voter apathy, we've got what we've got. And I think listening to this audience tonight, they are so hungry for change. And I hear a lot of word soup about trust and about experience and about leadership and it's got us to this. So simply call an election, whoever is the leader of the party, Call the election. Forget about Westminster. Forget about next year. 
Do it now. You agree? Uh, so I've, I've set out... Um, I've set out why uh, I don't believe that's the right course of action. I don't fear uh, an election, by the way. I, I've, um, so I've, I've, I've been involved in four elections in the last yeah, you're gonna lose uh, the next nine one, years. You're going to lose the next one. I enjoy, I've not really been afforded that chance much tonight. Um, but I, I, um, I, I don't fear an election. Uh, I think uh, we have got a good record to take uh, to the country whenever uh, people, the general election is called. People want it. Whenever a general election is called. And I understand... Uh, the, the, the frustration that there is. Of course I do. But I think what we need right now, given the, what I've said around the fact that this does not change the need for a Scottish election again in 2026, uh, I think it's important that we do have stability, that we do uh, show leadership, not just in government, but across the parliament, where we're now leading a minority... No, we're now living... What's going to happen, what's going to happen is that between all of you, you will do shady deals to stay in power? Well, no, I, I don't think that's the case. I think what you actually get is people working together on areas where they agree and where they can take forward matters in the public interest. And actually, I think that is an opportunity for Parliament. And it's going to be a responsibility, not, not just Nicholas on Sturgeon government, but also for uh, those, uh, of, of, of those that are sitting on the opposition benches who have not come forward uh, of late in I good faith. You know. In good I faith. No, Paul, you didn't I, I come forward think, no, with I a single not idea, not nor a, a negotiating point of the last budget round. Uh, so, it's not, so there's going to be a responsibility. In any case. There's going to be a responsibility. There's going, to be a your point. Finish your point. There's going to be a responsibility upon parties across the Parliament to come forward in good faith with ideas and policies and compromise to make sure that we can right. go okay. forward in the, part, in the He's talking national about you. interest. Well, look, I think what was interesting is Nicola Sturgeon put in one of her very rare appearances in the Scottish Parliament today and asked by our rival broadcaster as she was leaving. She said, who would be best to be Scotland's next First Minister? And she said, whoever's best for the SNP. Not for parents, not for pupils, not for our country. Because the SNP, for the last 17 years, have governed in the Scottish National Party's interests, not, not in the national interests of the people of Scotland. And that is, that is the reality. So I think people do want to be able to cast their verdict on the SNP. Sadly, that motion failed today. But actually, the next general election, where in seats right across Scotland, from the northeast to the southwest, in seats where we are up against the SNP, it's only the Scottish Conservatives that can beat them. We did that in a by-election in our broth last week, where our vote was up 10 per cent, and the SNP I'm vote was down 8 per cent. We need to get the SNP out in seats across Scotland. Removing Hamza Yusuf was a very good start, but when the general election comes, we can push forward well, and get rid of the SNP in those seats. Pe people were laughing at that, so let's maybe try and find out what... Man with the beard towards the back. On you go. Yes. Hi. Uh, no, I think it's, it's not fair uh, that we are rushing to have a general election in Scotland because the next leader is not elected. In Wales, when the leader stepped down, a Labour leader came in. We had Liz Truss and Rishi Sunak not elected by the electorate. So why are we gunning for the SNP only? It's our political system that is corrupt, which allows this to happen. If, if I have to be fair, it has to be across the board, not just Scotland, Wales, Northern Ireland or England, for that thank matter. You, thank you. Uh, man in the grey top on the end. Yeah. Yeah, I just want to sort of echo that, really. Um, it's all well and good saying that you should be calling for an election, but could any of the other parties say that if they were in this situation that they would, uh, they would be echoing that again? Okay. Can I, can I just... Thank you. No, hang on a second. I want to hear more audience here. Man with the glasses at the back. Yes. How can Neil Gray sit there and say that SNP can offer stability when the power couple of the SNP, Peter Morell and Nicola Sturgeon, are in the papers? His predecessor had to resign because of the iPad charges, which um, is utterly appalling. How can you offer stability when you're always in the news? Uh, well, uh, I think you're talking about stability moving forward, really, aren't you, Neil Gray? Oh, of course. And I, I, I think Chaos. you know it has been a, a challenging year for the party. Of course it has. I'm not, I, 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 I don't, um, I'm not going to pretend that it's, get that it's otherwise. Uh, but I believe there is a way forward. I believe that we can implement the manifesto upon which uh, we were elected in 2021, the mandate that we were uh, given, that we can focus in on the areas that people uh, do want to see progress on, okay. on uh, the economy, on the NHS, well, the reform and recovery we'll hear, that is needed we'll to come We'll hear more in a second what are the priorities for people here. Ash Regan, time for an election? Well, the 
public are sending the SNP a message. There's no doubt about that. Over the last year, uh, the gap between the number of people that say they're going to vote for the SNP at the next election and the support for independence, the gap now is, is 15 points there. So there, there's a message being sent here to the SNP from the public that they're not happy about the priorities that the SNP have been focusing on. And arguably, I would say that many people vote for the SNP because they want to see progress on independence. Progress on independence is not just something you wheel out at an election to get people to vote for you. You need to show action. You need to show a plan for how you're going to get there. I'll work with anyone that can put a plan in place. But I would say... They don't want to work that, with you. Well, they have an opportunity to do that. I, you know, I've said that I'll work, I'll work with anyone to progress independence and the, and the other issues that I care about. Um, that there's support, you know, there, I think there are priorities of the public, by the way, as well, like the competence in government, like saving Scotland's only oil refinery as well. I think that's very important. So a new leader does offer the opportunity to the SNP, should they choose to take it, to work with people like myself or others across the chamber, to reset back to the priorities of the people of Scotland. Lorna Slater, um, people here, lots of people in this room are calling for an election. They want to have a say in all of this. Why are they wrong? I, I don't think you're wrong. Democracy always needs to work. Mm. But what I want to set out is what we've got between now and the election in 2026. What we have is a whole lot of legislation coming through. Yep. And it is things that the Scotland needs. Reform of our agriculture. We cannot leave our farmers hanging. Conversion they need therapy. to know what their new payment structure will look like. We have to get that through. Land reform. We need to reform land in Scotland. We can't allow this continuing ownership of uh, most of Scotland by only a few number of people. We have to make it fair. We we have to bring in better rights for tenants, rights to keep pets, rights to decorate, rent controls. We have a natural it's all that environment. Above all of this, all of this legislation. Yet. This, is, this is the work of governance, of governing. These are the things. And that, and that, I don't, that was only half a dozen. There's, there's dozens of bills that are coming through. This is the work of governing, and that is what we had been doing together in the House in and what an SNP minority government would not do a red for them. All of those bits of legislation are really important. Now, Labour are dying to have some chaos thrown into the situation. Because even with the SNP having a challenging year, Labour has not managed to pull ahead from that, um, look, of look, them. You can, you can, they have not can, managed to do can, that. So can, they're the trying to say, stir the pot look, here. You can't have the one say what you we, want to see what we need to do, and deny an election. What like, we need to do, I understand, I understand where people are coming from, but what we need to do is deliver on what, we, what we've got in the plan. But because you're not doing that. Our farmers need those fees. Our, far, our farmers need their payments. The rent tenants need rent controls and fairer tenancy rights. All of this work needs to continue. And I hope very much that we can work towards that because that is how we get a fairer, greener Scotland. We set out a program for government and we delivered on that. But you're not and in government anymore. And, will that and we will continue to try and deliver on the things that are important still in to government? the Scottish Greens. <laughs> Even if we're working in opposition, we, 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 we. we have been steadfast, Craig, about what we are going to deliver, and we will deliver it whether we're in opposition or in government. Right.